Good morning, good afternoon and good evening everybody. Thanks for taking another look at one of my videos. This time around it's a 1978 Matchbox Porsche 911 Turbo. Da -da -da. So this is the first time I've ever fettled with a Porsche. So I have plenty in the collection. This one being slightly battered and bruised, I think has been at the bottom of the toy box as a child for a number of years. So it's got quite a little bit of heavy damage to these A pillars at the front. There's cracks. There's a few little minor imperfections and dents. But other than that, I think it's a good one to do more of a resto than modifications. I normally like to do the race cars. I'm a big fan of tin tops, all the touring cars and rally cars. Not so much Formula One and stuff like that, but I do like the circuit cars. But this time I wanted to try and not do so much decals, if you like, and just do a f plain flat finish and see how it comes out. So I want to get rid of the these tow bars matchbox always used to put on back in the 70s it's got a bit of work to do on these pillars as i say so let's get cracking with it there's a few videos i've done where i've showed you how to remove the paint but to save a lot of time and effort i've done some standalone ones if you take a look on the playlist in my channel there's a few on how to remove the bodies how to remove the paint so we can get straight down with it and show you a little bit more in detail of the car itself. So now it's all had its paint taken away. There's a few, well, there's quite a bit of imperfections all over the body. As you can see, a little bit of pitting, a little bit of corrosion. You can see now in more detail these pillars where they've cracked quite heavily at the front and there's a little bit of a dent in the rear one there but other than that I think we can salvage it the interior is very basic um, a nifty little way of how they did this dashboard assembly and this two piece at the front there like that and it folds back on itself I assume it's probably down to how they manufactured it back then uh, more than anything else the steering wheel is a little bit wonky but we'll sort that out the chassis is okay it could do with a bit of a polish down and some paints to match it the same color as the body but other than that it's fairly typical of a 70s matchbox so sorting out now these pillars and correcting them all i'm going to do is lightly tap it against this little anvil and I've used, it's actually an old screwdriver when the handle came off it. I've sharpened the end into a point on one side. So I use it as a hole punch or a center punch, should I say. And then on the other, I just quickly knock it back down if I need to on little things like this. You could use anything. You could use a, a screwdriver head itself uh, or anything just to knock it down assuming you haven't got a, a really tiny little hammer to get in there but as you can see the back ones have come out okay one side has still got a little bit this side here a little bit underneath a bit of an imperfection and i think it's more there's a bit of flash on the casting itself unusually for matchbox so i'll file that down but going back to these front ones one side's fairly straight anyway but this side here has got quite a bit of a kink in it so i'll just jump back down and give it some like little taps just to knock it back in there form again and they've come out not too shabby the other one i used a little bit of brute force and sheer ignorance actually and just pulled it the one on the left the one on the left as we're looking at it um and in hindsight it's probably a bit stupid because if it had snapped it probably would have 
slit a finger in half, but nevertheless, I've uh, pulled that one straight pretty good. So I'm just going to bond them now at the top. And I'm using some of this little rocket powder to go with the super glue. And if you've never used it, I'll, I'll try and get it to show up on camera now. It's, it's like very, very, very fine sand almost. And there's different methods to do with this. You could you could fill up the gap and then put the glue on. But the problem is with this, it will just fall straight through. So you just got to suck it and see really and put the glue on and then sprinkle a bit of this little magic dust powdery stuff. So it hopefully fills in the gap just to give it that little bit more strength. And aesthetically, it doesn't really matter what it looks like now because I'm going to give it a good sanding down anyway and use a little bit of filler because you can't get it too perfect. But before I get to that, I'll just wire wheel some of this area down. And I'm going to go over the full body anyway just to get rid of these imperfections. But I'm just going to go over this fix here on the top of this pillar just to show you and the the left hand side the one that I just bent by hand which is fairly straight anyway it's come out a lot better the one on the right still has got a bit of a bit of a gap really so I'll come back to that later and use some filler on that so I'll just continue with the rest of the body and get out some of this stubborn paint that didn't remove. And again, some of these imperfections. Wear safety glasses, as I say, in the other videos, because these little brushes, they fly off all over the place. You've got to be careful. But here, you can see this side that hasn't been done versus the side that has been done now. And it's taking shape, not too bad the real bad imperfections i will use now some of this green putty as i'm going to do on this a pillar anyway and if you've never used this stuff before i've, I've done it on my other videos it is good stuff it does dry really fast it doesn't cure fast but it dries fast if that makes sense so within a couple of seconds it does literally start to get dry and sandy so if it doesn't stick down too well you just got to keep rubbing it round almost and try and fill in the gaps and as you can see it can be a little bit fiddly and it can be a bit of a pain so it is often best just to blob as much as you can on first hit hope for the best and sand it right back and it's good to spread the area anyway and not just do it in the local area you want to do but spread the area if you like and sand it right back down so it is good stuff but it is fiddly curing wise i always leave it nearly 24 hours to be honest you could probably get away with four or five but four or five hours later of waiting for something to dry i've forgotten what i was doing in the first place anyway so i'll put it to one side and come back the following day again on the rear where this tow bar stuck out just molding it a little bit with this knife just just to help with the sanding process later on more than anything but whilst it's all drying i'll jump down and remove this metal bottom to this tow bar i hate why match boxes i can understand why they did it you know these little caravans little trailers all sorts of little accessories but you know when you used to get rs2000s when you get Porsches like this with tow bars on it, it used to make me laugh even as a kid. I used to think, oh, what the hell? But anyway, it is what it is. So quickly jumping on this little scroll saw, nip it off, and then I'll finish it down with some light tickling on this file. Just dress it back a little bit. And all is pretty good on that front not much drama at all all fairly straightforward at this stage so plodding along pretty good now now it's dried it's time to start sanding and filing back these areas and as you can see i, I, I do 
tickle it in a little bit to the metal as well and trying to make it as flush as I possibly can. It is a little bit suck it in see. And until you put the primer down you can see what sort of effect it's got. Sometimes it's hard to tell with the the colour it is really, the green against the metal of the, the car. And they was, as I said, I put quite a bit down. You can trim it with a knife if you want to. But sanding is really good. You can even drill it and tap it as well. So good stuff to use this green putty from Squadron. So I'm going to make some little wing mirrors for this one. I said I wasn't going to go too far in depth with detail, and I'm not. I'm just going to add a couple of little personalities. Personalities, is that the right word? Um, personal items to it. So one of them is the door mirrors. So I'm going to use this EPO putty again. I'll put some links, as I do with everything else I've mentioned in this video. I'll put them in the description. And it's equal measures squidged together, rolled into one. And it's best to use a little pot of water just by size, just to keep your fingers wet, because it does get really tacky uh, very quickly. So it does start to stick to everything, more so your fingers. And I always do far, far, far too much. So I've started. I'm making little squares and little blocks and stuff so I can make little jerry cans at a later date. So I've got a big pile of all these little off shoots of this stuff. But for now, anyway, I'm making these little wing mirrors. So I've trimmed down and straightened a paper clip, rolled some of this EPO putty, and simply just shove it on for now. And there we go, we've got a collection of reindeer poo with some fireworks up it. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know where that come from. It looks like little mice. But there you go. I've got some of them. I'll drill the hole now then to put the wing mirror in. A door mirror even. Not a wing mirror. A door mirror. And just take your time. I appreciate not everybody's got a pillar drill. You could use a hand drill if as long as you keep it nice and secure and a little grip. A little vice grip or something like that. But again, take care. And whilst it looks like it's taken a few seconds for this stuff to dry, this stuff really has taken 24 hours. So if I come back to it now, it is really a simple matter of, again, trimming and sanding this stuff down. But without boring you too much of watching a grown man sand some putty on the end of a paper clip. Here's one that I did earlier against one of the ones on its own. I do go overboard because it's better to trim back than to not have enough to even begin with. So hence that's why there's a big bulk load of it in the beginning. So on to the obligatory primer shop now. And I do primer all my cars. I know a lot of people don't do with the die cast to go straight on with the paint but I always do yes it makes the paint stick better but more so for me when I'm doing all these little restorations and the modifications and whatnot it's more to do with how the filler and stuff looks afterwards and as you can see now just on that pillar there is a little bit more tickling back I gotta do with some sanding and linishing of it um, the pitted areas have come out okay, actually. This rear end where I filled in where this tow bar come out could do with a bit more shaping. does look like it's had a bit of a shunt up the back end. So, again, that's exactly what the, the prime is there to do, other than stick the paint down as well. So, I'll re-look at that. And when I have, I'm going to jump straight on with some Tamiya TS28 olive drab paint. And I'm not cracking open the spray compressor this time using a rattle can. I've said many times in my other videos, if I've got the can there, 
and the colour I want, I'll just crack on with it and do it. So a few light coats and we're good. The wheels this time, I'm going to use another set which I've used in another video from this guy called Turbo Sheep on Instagram. I'll put the link in the description. He does some great little wheels. And these rubber tyres I've got, I've got off eBay. Again, I'll give you the link. I've got a big bulk load of them. They're really good. They've got writing on one side and playing on the other. So they're really good little tyres to put on there. So I'll just do some detailing and I'll start with the wheels. I like to do a lot of the paint by hand. I know other people have mentioned paint pens in the past. I have tried them, they're just not for me. Um, they do have the good uses here and there and you know, I have used them, but for me, I still like to do a little bit of hand work. So here I am, I'm just gonna do a little bit of detailing. Keep some areas of this rim black. The others I'll put a little bit of chrome silver in and it really does bring these ones to life. Good set of wheels, highly recommended. I'll quickly offer up these wing mirrors. Now the paint is dried um, and I was toyed whether to do them color coded like the body or to do them chrome and as I was doing this my youngest son came in said yeah very good do them chrome so <laughs> there you go I've been outranked so they're going to get pumped in chrome just continuing with this little interior just get rid of this little plastic tow bar thing and get detailing away again. I always use a little matchstick to stir it, but I always get the paint off the matchstick as well. I never dip in because the oils always seem to keep the paint very thin on the top. Whereas if you've stirred it with the little matchstick or a little stick or whatever, lifting that out and getting off the bottom of that stick always got thicker, better paint in my opinion anyway. So just thought I'd share that just in case anybody was wondering why. I'm keeping this very basic. Don't want to go to town too much on this. I'm just painting what was there, not adding anything. But here assembled into it, it's some very 70s earthy tones now with the silver mirrors as advised by my son. Actually, they do look pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with them, actually. They look all right. They look okay. Don't tell him that, though. But whilst he was on here, he did say to me, how would you get in it? I said, what are you on about? How would you get in the car? I said, what do you mean how to get in the car? It's got no door handles. And he's right, you know. So, rather stupidly, I'm going to do the smallest little piece of styrene I've ever attempted to do, which is... Not much more bigger than a grain of rice, but here we go. I'm going to knock up, and rather surprisingly, I did these two without losing one single piece. I've done things ten times the size of this, and they'll flick across the workbench somewhere in the garage, and I can't find the damn thing. These two little bleeders, crikey, I did them in about five minutes. So, fairly straightforward. As I've just showed you, cut to size, a little bit of sanding just to shape it. Um, nothing massively over the top, really. If, if anything, more than it, it's just as fiddly as, as you can tell, it's fiddly as hell. But once I could stick it down onto some masking tape afterwards to paint it, it wasn't too bad. But there you go. Some little door mirrors. Moving on to the window assembly. I've said it many a times on my other videos and you've some of you agree with me. Well, I think most of you agree with me, actually. The coloured screens, I just don't know what they're thinking. Yellow, green, blue, red. It just baffles me why they, they put coloured into the screens. God only knows. So here I am using a bit of evergreen. Well, it's evergreen. It's from evergreen styrene. 
but I don't think this stuff is starring some little poly acrylic -y type stuff. It's actually very, very similar to a lot of the packaging and windows you get in cardboard boxes with toys. And so if you ever see, see any of it, keep it to one side. Really good. Other people have said I've used a plastic bottle. The plastic bottle is way, way, way too thick, but this stuff can make some nice little screens. Doesn't look pretty to start with, but you can trim it all down. Looks fantastic once it's finished. So, so finally, just some last little bit of external detailing. A little bit of the headlights, a little bit on the bumpers. Just taking my time just to work my way around it. Here's some good little paint, this clear orange and the clear reds for doing the lights. If you put a bit of silver down first and then lightly start putting this, it can be a little bit runny at times, but it, as it suggests, it's clear and it does really give a really good translucent little effect for doing the lights. It looks really, really good. Highly recommend the stuff. So nearly penultimately, just going to stick down these little door handles that I've made. Now I've painted them. As you can see, fiddly as you like. And as you now can't see because of my superb camera angle, <laughs> um, 10 out of 10 for video in there. Absolute unbelievable. Hey? Where did you get this guy? Crikey. There you go. Look at that. Fantastic. Little hand on. Stuck first time as well. Can't ask for more than that. Idiot. Why did you put your hand in the way? Anyway. Almost done. As I was flowing through my Pinterest feed, as I always do when looking at these cars for inspiration, I suddenly realised these earlier models had some little fog lamps spot lamps whatever you want to call them wherever you are in the world some call them fog lamps some call them spot lamps another great angle there of my hands but there you go i don't know what i'm doing this time i do apologize here you go so a little block once i've painted it you can stick it right under that bump a bit there a little bit of paint afterwards and we've got some retro spotties underneath so let's have a look and remind ourselves of what it originally started out like quite an old battered and bruised one with horrible windows still i'm sure it pulled the caravan at one point and here we go my take on a restored old matchbox, my first Porsche that I've done. Wing mirrors have been added, new windscreens, number plates, door mirrors, handles. Did I say door mirrors? Yeah, I've already said door mirrors. Fog lamps and ants on the front. The new Fouche style wheels. I think they were Fouche wheels on them. Colour might not be to everybody's tastes. I quite like it. Well, I do like it. I don't quite like it. I don't. I do like the colour, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. But there you go. My take on a Porsche. I really hope you like it. I hope you continue to keep watching my videos. I hope you subscribe. I think all that really I need to think about now is what other Porsches I could possibly do. There's 934s, 935s, a 959 Dakar. 944 turbos ah, here we go quite a few i've got left over 928 there about an rwb one who knows let me know until next time thanks for watching everybody all the best